Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Walkie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, I wanted to talk about something that's happened over in the JP side of the game, because the brand new Valentine's Day unit has come out, and it's a unit that I actually kind of guessed, even though, I, to be fair, I've been guessing, um, uh, forgive me if I don't say your name right, Bazette for years now, and uh, <laughs> really the main reason is, is that a friend of mine really loves her, so I always guessed that she was coming up, but then it actually happened, and I was like, oh, I was just kidding about the relation to Karen, so she came out, and I want to talk about her a little bit, because she actually has a pretty cool, unique style NP that I want to talk about, and so that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it, and if you do, feel free to leave a like, uh, comment down below, tell me if you're going to be saving either two years, or if you're on the JP side of the game and you're playing now, first of all, good luck summoning in general, <laughs> but tell me if you summoned for her, and if you got her, and how you're liking her, if you're using her. So, this is Bazette. She comes from, I believe it's Hollow, Hollow, uh, frick, what is the name of it? It's Hollow A. Extoria or something like that. She's really cool. Uh, she's also been in a bunch of other stuff. I think the thing I most know her for is the clip from Ilya because my friends keep trying to get me to see Prisma Star Ilya and they always show me the scenes of her fighting and they say this looks cool. And I said this does look cool. I'm not gonna watch Prisma Star Ilya though or read it so stop trying. But here she is as a pseudo servant under the um who is this? Mananan? Mananan Mac Blear. She's Kelt. So this name, well, the person, I don't think it's an actual, I think it's a man servant, but anyway, I think, I'm not actually sure. Mananan Mac Lear. Very hard to pronounce. But let's look at the skills real quick. So first skill is increase on quick performance for three turns, increases on buster performance for three turns, increase on critical damage for three turns, increases on damage against caster enemies for three turns. Quick is 30%, buster is 30%. Crit damage is 30% and caster damage is 30%, 6. Um, she's also an alter ego. Good thing to kind of bring back up here. Her second skill is Sea God's Ruin. Uh, rune. Not Ruin. Uh, charge zone NP gauge. Increases on crit star absorption for one turn. Increases on critical damage for one turn. At level 10, it's 50%, 500%, 100%. And third skill, Secession of the Red Branch B. Grants self evasion for one turn, grants self debuff immunity for one turn, gains crit stars, and crit stars are is 20 crit stars at level 10. And yeah, and this evasion is going to be important because that's basically the only thing she has for built in defense, which is going to be important. The passive skills magic resistance B increases on debuff resistance by 17.5%, writing A increases on quick performance by uh, 10%. E, Divinity B increases on damage by 175, and God's Holder's Tradition Carrier EX increases on crit damage by 5%, and extends offensive buff expiration timing on self from the end of your turn to the end of the enemy turn, which is very important. It doesn't buy you much time, it just barely buys you like a half a turn, but it's important for what she does in her NP. Um, it's, so it's attack up, quick up, arts up, buster up, I believe this is damage up, damage plus, specific damage, crit, uh, crit chance, uh, oh wait, really, is it really? Crit attack chance up, yeah, I guess for if the enemy uses it. Oh no, that's terrifying if the enemy uses it. NP damage up, NP damage up boost, ignore evasion, ignore invincibility, ignore defense, hit count up, and ignore offensive class disadvantages. If she has any of those applies. And then her pen skills are extra attack finesse improvements, mana loading, and uh, anti-Avenger, which is fitting because Avenger um, what's his nuts? What is his nuts name? Anger de Manu. Uh, she is the master of Anger and you, as well as Ku, I believe. I think she was the original Ku master until some shenanigans happened. Anyway, her double phantasm is a counter, which is kind of new. Angry Manu actually has something kind of like this, but it's not exactly the same. So she draws attention to all enemies to self by 500% for one turn. Grants self the Fragorock counter. Uh, status for one turn. Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock counter or something like that. One hit, 100%. Quick type, noble event, uh, phantasm, card attack, ignores NP seal, buff, debuff, removal, buff, block effects, deals damage to one enemy when taking attack, or become the target of an active skill by them except some special actions. So if the enemy has break gauges, the counter attack cannot break it if it 1 HP remains and reduces their quick resistance by 10% for 3 turns and also you gain 10 crit stars. 
and the counter damage is 600% at level 1, and if you go all the way to level 5, it is 100%, and the increase on the attack at overcharge level 1 is 10% and 30% at the final level. So, this is actually the thing that makes it super interesting, so... Some things about this that don't really mention it here, if she dies, she doesn't get the counter off. So, obviously, um... That's the main issue here, is that she has to take damage. Uh, and she's kind of, not fragile is not the right word for it, but, um, having only one real defensive thing, like evasion, isn't the greatest. Um, but also the thing about the break, yeah, the break gauges thing is kind of sad because it means that if you have a break gauge, then it will always stay at one and you'll waste a turn. Very sucky, for sure, for sure. But... The reason that she has these kind of like caveats as is like obviously she doesn't get something here like giving herself invincibility or something like that. And the reason the break gauge is, is something like this. One, some people were actually thinking the break gauges are like this because they were afraid of what it would do to the enemy turn counter. Because it might make it a little bit weird. The reason I think it happened is that it's probably possible to KO an enemy in one turn if she's buffed enough. So the one team comp I saw her with, I believe it was with... Merlin and Scott? No, it was Scotty. It was Scotty. Um, to buff off her quick stuff. And she was able to uh, two turn a boss that had Kiara, who had three break gauges. So, what happens is, is what they say here is that, yeah, she doesn't break gauge if it's already on there. But if she breaks them with her own cards in the beginning. Meaning they all, she already broke them once and then she applies the Noble Phantasm. What happens is, is that she'll actually be able to attack and in essence take down the break gauge from the second. Start working on the second break gauge and start attacking then. And then when it's your turn, do it again because she's been getting herself buffed or whatever. And do another NP and you're able to basically two turn because you're just dealing so much damage. Especially with all the crit stuff because you're getting crazy crits. I actually think you can crit on the enemy team, if I remember right. Let me actually pause and look at that video again, because I'm almost positive you were critting. Ew, it wasn't critting. I was just uh, misremembering it, and it was actually weakness. But she was dealing, like, for... Break, for example, the amount of damage she was doing was... A hundred... Uh, one... How do you pronounce... Let me go to my... The one moment. 160,000. She was doing 160,000 for each hit for before doing one counter and that was after one attack so if your enemy attacks three times <laughs> you're gonna be doing a lot of damage so yeah i think that this unit i can understand why on the face value if you look at it and you go like ah you know she doesn't really she's a tauncher but if she dies she's basically done if they noble phantasm her then she's done and i will agree yeah i think it would have been nice for her to have some kind of built-in way maybe in one of the skills to kind of lower either not either lower the np gauge or prevent them from NPing. because really the pro the problem is is that if they np her then it's kind of over and if they do a move where they like get their double phantasm turn one then you're kind of screwed because she's dead and there's no uh defending it unless you got lucky and had some kind of defensive thing on her but if they don't do any of that then she has the potential to just completely destroy the enemy and like i said take down a boss who could take would in theory take you three turns then take them down in two turns just because of how much damage she's doing with her quick stuff and also she's applying the quick resistance so if they attack you three times this stacks up that's a lot of quick resistance going down as long as well as all the buffs she's giving to herself especially here with the the buffs to this and stuff this kind of stuff like getting a uh, hundred percent crit damage even if it's only for one turn is still pretty good so you can do the setup chances are you will have enough crit stuff by the end of your second turn doing this and you'll just do a buttload of damage so i think she's a very interesting unit and i'll be interested to see if they do any other type of counter i think it makes sense for noble phantasms to get a counter i can't imagine how pain of ass she's going to be to actually fight because again this says uh, act uh, if this skill targets you then she counter attacks so that would be actually be kind of messed up if you're fighting a boss where if you try and apply any debuff at all to them then they're just going to completely destroy you. Like, I remember one time the for Christmas, they had a boss where you fought Angramanyu, and a lot of people did not know how to really counter his Noble Phantasm, because they're just like, how do I fight 
this. It doesn't seem fair to fight. So I bet whenever they decide to make... There's going to be a... Um, an eventual challenge quest featuring her that's going to be insanely hard to actually get done, but I would like to see them trying to apply counters to maybe some other stuff, maybe a skill or something like that. Actually, I think for now it would make sense to keep it just as a Noble Phantasm, just because I really do think, like, if they were not cautious, and I think they were cautious and I think they took the right approach on this one, if they were unconscious, it would have been able to completely destroy the game. Um, speaking as someone from experience who has watched units who have the ability to counter other units completely destroy them, um, you really should be careful when you're building this kind of noble phantasm. But, you know, cool idea. It's cool that she's finally in the game. I think she's definitely said this has been a rough year in terms of saving. I think every, almost every new unit, even some of the returning ones, I'm like, I kind of want to save. It's going to make it very hard to save up because I feel like now that they have a pity, they're like... Yeah, so the only thing that was holding us back from releasing multiple units at once was the fact that we didn't have a pity. But now we have one, so now we're releasing just all the popular ones and a quick run through real quick. So yeah, rough times for saving, but good times as well. So I can't wait to, I'll see in two years what happens, but for now, that's the end of the video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember, feel free to leave a like, comment down below, tell me how you're feeling. If you want to correct me for any of the mispronunciations I've said, or if you want to remind me of Hollow Extolia, is that what it... Actually, the name of it should be here somewhere, isn't it? Hollow... F uh, fate... Slash... Hollow... Hollow... No, I guess not. Oh, trivia. She has the highest attack value of all Ultra Egos. At six hits, she is the highest crit hit count. If both bombs are used by the enemy and her noble phantasm is used after that, then the attack up and taunt effect on her will be blocked, but the counter will be successfully cast. Huh. If the enemy ever uses an AoE attack or an attack aimed at her, or used an AoE debuff or debuff aimed at her, she will be able to counter these actions. Huh. Interesting stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. If she's hit with an immobility debuff, then she kind of can't counter. <laughs> The counter is also not triggered when her HP reduces zero by enemy attack, but if you use Guts, then you're good. Also, if she is sacrificed by Chen Gong's NP while in gut states, the counter or not That would be pretty funny if it did. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. So that what is his? Because his is the same. I wish I had this unit. Yeah, he has like a weird waiting. It's not a counter, so to say. It's a weird, it's a weird thingy. But anyway, that's it. Goodbye, everyone. Have a nice day. Have a good night. Peace out.